Hello, I'm Bird, and welcome to episode two of Rebuilding Boa Vista. As always, thanks for joining me. Hopefully, you're going to enjoy this episode enough to smash the like button. And if you're new, hopefully, you'll smash the like button, you'll subscribe, and you'll go and check out all my other videos. But if you've come back for this one, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the first episode. I enjoyed playing this. Um, people can ask me, uh, even though I talk about this all the time, they ask me if I play these. Yes, I do. I play these over the course of a week and then I film them the week later. So I played all this last week. This week I'm playing another team. And it's, a ro it's like a rotation. It's like three seasons a week. It's pretty easy, really. Pretty easy. I will say, though, I am going all day in a couple of weeks. So there'll be nothing for an entire week pretty soon. But right now we're here in Portugal. And things are about to change. Not only because we're in Europe, but something happened over the summer. It's like a double-edged sword, really. Because um, on one hand, something happened It's quite good. But on the other hand, I kind of didn't want that to happen. I think we're best getting stuck right into it. Now, we're going to start here. And we're right at the end of the last episode. Exactly at the end of the last episode. And we're looking at the staff as an overview. Um, because... Mr. Victor Murta is no longer our chairman. Oh, we have a brand new board. A brand new board because we had a takeover. And that's what I mean. It was like a double-edged sword because we got a bit of investment. Um, all in all, we had like 20 million in the bank, coupled with new sponsorships from Europe. A bit of that was probably because of Europe as well. But I ended up with like 20 million in the bank and about 10, 11 to spend, which is a lot for us. Compared to Benfica, though, I might show you that at some point. I'll show you the spending power of a team like Benfica. It's a drop in the ocean, but part of me didn't want that to happen. Um, I wanted to keep going at it with loans, maybe, and seeing what I could do with free signings, because we weren't really going to have a lot of money. So it is what it is. I, can't, I couldn't go back. I contemplated it. I ain't got the time. I'm playing three seasons a week here, and I'm working a lot, building up to going away on holiday. So I just, I just did not want to start again. Because, I'll be honest with you, I know a takeover can happen at any moment. It is it is a case of anything can happen. And I know this because on my Denton Villa series this year, it was built around having two chairmen from the town it was based in. And for a while, they, they were up for selling. And then one summer, I used to make summer special videos. One summer, um, they sold it and I got a new owner. I was like, nice. It is what it is. I can make a story around it. And then the game crashed. And I had to go back to the start of the summer and play it again. And they didn't sell. And I got another three seasons out of them before they did sell. So, you know, anything could happen. I could have gone back a season, played a year, and we didn't sell. We wouldn't sell it. But I can't be bothered. So we have a new board. And they are Brazilian. Good ties with Brazil. And I have noticed there's a few Brazilian owners in Portugal. So, I mean, they're not a tycoon. They're not mega rich. It is what it is. So I've made quite a few changes. We've got some players in cheap, some players for good value, um, some players for free, which ain't too bad. Got a player in on loan as well, um, and I spent about 11 million, um, maybe a bit more over time. I managed to bring in 1.4 million, which isn't too bad for a team like us. Um, so obviously I've spent more than I thought I was ever going to get to spend. I was hoping for a good few mil, but it's worked out okay. Um, and obviously having my Brazilian shortlist really, really helped. So I'm going to try and go through, I don't want to go through them all one by one because there's so many. I think the best thing probably too is to look at a team report and have a look at the depth. So let's start here at the back with the goalkeepers and we still have the same guy who's now my number two because 18 reflex is amazing, handling of eight is shocking. Um, but I've got a new goalkeeper called Ivan, 22 year old Brazilian who, I mean, does it initially shout out amazing but I think he'd be good in this league. He's got a better base start than the other guy. He's young, so he could improve. Handling 15, reflex is 14. Aerial ability, 14. You know, he's, he's a good young prospect. And when it comes to left backs, I needed two left backs. Um, obviously, players left. I had a guy alone, remember, last year. So I brought in this guy. He's got no face as a backup, Argentinian. But I found this kid, Leo Pele, 23-year-old, who's brilliant. I like him. A lot of do. With the right backs, no new right backs. We're sticking with two of the lads we had last year, except Caraca, who were quite light last year. He's looked like he's took a step back. Uh, and we've got this fella, who's probably going to be the starter. 
There's not a lot between them, both Portuguese. I'm just going to let them battle it out this year. Moving to the centre of the defence, and of course, had a good defender leave, as you know, on a free. He was only with us for a year. And the other good defender is, is get Costa. He's a bit old. He is a bit old. So I brought in two new guys. One with the Serbian connection, who now is my best defender, and I think he's brilliant for this league. And we also brought in this guy called Lucas Claro, I think. You may have heard of him, 27-year-old Brazilian again. All round, really good defender. Comes to the central midfielders, I really wanted to help, well, make them fit my tactic more this year. So we've got rid of a few. Um, and we've brought in a couple. A couple of players I like the look of, to be fair. We've got this geezer, Lucio Campagnucci, who is an absolute psychopath. He's a psychopath, but he's a good player. I like him. Um, Espino was already here at the club. Ronaldo, I got him for two reasons. One, he's a decent player, he's only 22 can get better it's called freaking Ronaldo isn't he Ronaldo I like it um Lea Leandrino I think Leandrino another Brazilian 25 good all-around player I mean these guys aren't world-class but I think they're good players and we're a good team and hopefully we can step up talking of stepping up let's go to the front of the team and I wanted new strikers and I also wanted a couple of wingers but I didn't need too many and I felt I needed one, we brought one in. And we had that kid I mentioned, do you remember me talking about someone who's got high potential, you couldn't see his name because of my head. And he was out alone and I couldn't get him back. Well, it's Jekka. He can play up front, he can play on the wing. And I think in this league, he's going to be good, 21-year-old, Ukrainian. He turns out to be a really, really good player. Um, this geezer was already here. So was Amy, had a great season last year. But I found this lad. He's a four-star player, 21-year-old. Arabidzi, Georgian. I think he's bloody brilliant. So I felt like we were okay on the wings. When it came to strikers, I wasn't happy with anything I had really had last year. Guys had to make do. I didn't want to make do. I wanted some decent players. So I brought two strikers in to be my two strikers. Uh, the first one was this guy who's a backup, but he's a decent finisher. He's off the ball, composure, all 14, which I felt for this league... Is like a good stat, and he's got a bit of pace. His pace and acceleration is 14, so you know he's 22. He can improve. So I thought as a backup, brilliant. Uh, my number one though, Pedro Enrique. Love his name. You know, just a bit better, maybe different. Got more all-round game about him. Again, can get better. And that's pretty much it. Quite a few transfers, a few squad fillers who aren't that great, but um, I was impressed. And the bookies have bumped us up a spot. Cheeky bastards. Sixth, I think we'll finish. Hopefully do better than that, hopefully. Um, you can see there, I've spent about 10 and a bit million, to be fair. Got rid of a few players. Brought a bit of money in, not too much. You know, it is what it is, but yeah, at one point, I won't do it. I'll show it you later. I think I'll, I'll leave it for the next episode. I took over Benfica to see. They're really good, Benfica. And I just took them over um, just to have a look at what, kind, what the money's like. And they had like 120 million in the bank. We've expanded the staff um, as a whole pretty much. And the scouting team's way better. Which again, I'm doing just pure scouting this season. Um, and my coaching team's got stronger. It's a bit different and varied, but I think it's better. And again, I'm all about the staff. Like I said, I am just scouting and scouting and scouting. But now, I'll be honest with you, I was talking about in the last episode about just trying to save money. Now we've got a few extra quid, might as well try and spend it. If it's some in the bank and they're not letting me have any transfer budget, I've cleared that out. Uh, I might as well try and do more by expanding my scouting package, maybe unearthing some more players, um, but also trying to improve the club. I wanted a freaking financial um, affiliate. They wouldn't let me do that. But they would let me um, expand our scouting knowledge and the best of a bad bunch was this team from Italy. I've never heard of him, but it was basically to see if we could open up um, any new players. Um, I just want to have as much, many options as I could. One thing that's pretty sweet as well is that they were letting me improve the training facilities and everything. So hopefully, going into season three, if we can stay as a European team, build on this squad. There hasn't really, I haven't got many loans either. Just build on the team. And just keep expanding it and growing it. And this is why I, I love doing this. I don't know why. I just never get bored. And... Um, Hopefully by season three, we'll be in an even stronger position to hopefully go and do something. I want to do something this year too. Got a decent team. I think it's better than last year, more balanced. And 
we're in Europe. Don't, now, I don't think we could win the league. I don't think we could win Europe. But one of these cups got me eye on one of them. Now, at this point, we've nearly completed our pre-season. Um, there's a friendly stuck in there between Europa League games, I think. But again, decent pre-season, similar to last year. We've gone on a little bit of a tour. Um, I think we went to France. And, you know, we've done all right. Then we played Ajax because I wanted to test ourselves. Played Leon as well. I wanted to test ourselves against teams we might come up against uh, in Europe. And then we've got a, a little friendly down there, cheeky one to finish off with. But, I mean, I was feeling really, really positive. I mean, that Jekka kid was going to turn out to be some kind of player. But, of course, we'll be kicking this season off playing in the Europa League, which is exciting. I want to get straight into that. Hopefully, we could do well. I mean, I don't expect anything from it. But you never know, football manager, what you can achieve, I don't think. You never really know. It doesn't always work out, does it? But if you uh, concentrate and work hard, and I don't know, don't watch TV too much. Make sure you don't just keep pressing the button like I do sometimes. You might do something special. I think we've checked all the bases there. I think we've done. I think the best thing to do now is to jump forward to January and let's have a look at what we've been up to. And I think the best thing to do is start here with the league table. And we're currently fifth. So we're in a European spot, which is great. Five points clear. Um, I just want to start cracking them sporting now. I'll be honest with you, right? In this country... Growing up, we always call them Sporting Lisbon. Someone had a go at me for that in the comments, saying you don't call them that, but we do. We just do, Sporting Lisbon. Always has been, and I'm 40. Um, but yeah, we're in the top five. As long as I can stay there, I'd be happy. And if you notice, I haven't been beat at this point. Just drawn a lot. So, you know, we could change that around and still push for a top three, two, one. <gasps> Maybe. So defensively, we're doing well. We're joint with Sporting, who have, you know, were nearly relegated last year. They've come out of nowhere, but big club, probably got good money. Uh, Benfica, though, again this year. Brilliant. When it comes to scoring goals, we're doing a lot better this year. I feel like, you know, when you're watching the games when I'm playing them, I just feel like, I've said this before, but usually once you start putting my own players in place and start moulding that team, it seems to start to play how I want them to play in full flow. And it does feel a bit like that, to be fair. I mean, we've been unlucky in a couple of games. Let's have a look at some of them results. Well, we started really well. We won four on the bounce against the teams we should be winning. And then we drew five. And we should have beaten every single one of them, in my opinion. Sporting, to be fair, they're good this year. You know, away from home, so fair enough. Uh, and then we've just won our last four games. Got to play Porto and Benfica. Back to back. <sighs> That'd be a test. Over to the Taka de Portugal. And uh, we're doing all right so far. Won three nil, um, five two, and three nil against teams I've, ne I've never, I've never played in Portugal. I don't really follow Portuguese football. So apart from three, maybe four, five teams, I don't know. I don't know any of these. I don't even know who these are. Tondela, not got a clue. But I'm guessing we should be beating them. The bookies think we should. Well, this is the Taca da Liga, kind of like a league cup, I'm guessing. But this is last year. Because I'm guessing, look, oh, we beat that team I was just talking about, didn't we? I'm guessing we were shit last year, but if we click one, straight into phase three. Phase three! That means we're up in the, going up in the world, doesn't it, eh? Straight into the group stage. Happy days. <sighs> oh my god. We beat the team that went up. So yeah, Taka de Liga. Bloody mass, then. Let's have a look at our European journey. This is what it's all about, isn't it? This is where we start to build this club back up to where it should belong with a bit of a European reputation but we lost the first game away 2-1 but then we won the next game 2-1 equal as anything although we were well better at home and uh, went to penalties I always say it's a lottery so unlucky to Az AZ in the place to be um, but Pele man of the match my little left back <laughs> it was up to the fourth qualifying phase and we went from Holland to Denmark and uh, Spank Bromby 3-0 and then beat them in their own place, 2-1, um, 5-1 on aggregate, pretty even away, but job was done really. That winger though, Arabidze, he's like, do you remember Georgie Kinkladze, little Georgie for City? Them City fans love that player. He's like Georgie, like our very own Kinky. And then of course it was onto the Europa League proper, where we got Drew in group I. wanted to say one, but it's I. Uh, and we won, top two. I mean, when we got the group, I thought we are, we can beat every single one of them. Uh, and we, but we didn't. We did actually lose a game, which shocked me really, because I just thought we were better. 
and we lost against Krasnodar, who I never knew, I, I didn't know they existed until I played a save um, a couple of years ago. Um, but, you know, fair play to them. We won the other five. 3-2, 1-0, 3-0, 2-0, Playing pretty well, to be fair, so I was happy. And we've drawn Rapid Vienna um, from Austria. And we, we should beat these. I felt confident we could do these over two legs. So this is my new squad arranged by average rating, and I have got a lot of seven average ratings there. I am happy with that. I know we're fifth in the league, halfway point. We haven't been beat. I think that's great. Um, the Cups, you know, Cups are the Cups. Hopefully we can still do well in the main one. We're still in Europe. Um, I know we finished fourth in the league last year, but kind of like soldier through a lot of that. Where, like, this is... I'm, I like this game when you do start to... When you've got a tactic you love, you start to mould your team to it and get players to fit it. And you, and they just start performing for you. I like that a lot, to be fair. But this kid is not silly. He's brilliant. Seven goals in nine in Europe, four in the league in 12, five in the cup, three in the other cup. I mean, he was up for sale. Benfica. He'd been on loan last year at Tondela. I never heard of Tondela. And now I've realised I played him last year. I'm playing him this year in the cup. And Pedro Enrique was there last year. I can't get rid of Tom Della. Another player I really love is Georgia Kinkladze. That's what I'm calling him. Looks like a young Georgia Kinkladze. Fellow Georgia Jayen. Um, great winger. Dribbling, crossing, corners, technique, speed, flair. Let's have a quick check in on the finances. And they're not too bad, to be fair. 10 in the bank will do me fine. Obviously, I spent 10 with add-ons, which will be paying off. But if we can stay as a European team, even if it's only your old league, I think we will be fine. I genuinely do. Uh, I don't think the club's, the chairman, the chairman's not rich. I don't think he'll invest anymore. I mean, they just put an initial amount in. But hopefully, if, you know, if we can stay in Europe, we might get more sponsorship and so on. If I could get another 10 next summer, even five, the way the squad's looking now, and what I was doing as well this year was giving out loads of new contracts. So I want to tie everyone down that I liked, which is a majority of them. And then next year, I might only have to make a couple of signings. I love this game. I love this game. I love it. I wish. I wish I could do it full time for you. I wish I could play more. I didn't have to work. And I could make a video every day. Like Loki Doki and Dr. Benji do. Fucking, I well wish that. So then, that's the halfway point. We're not doing bad in the league. Undefeated. Fifth. Uh, we're still in the Europa League. Got a team we should be beating, but you never know. It's Europe. We're still in attack de Portugal against Tondela, that famous team that we all know about. I love that logo, by the way. Uh, and we're out of the other one, but no one cares about that. Well, let's start with the league. And well, we, we're never going to win the league. We only lost three games. Porto finished the season undefeated. Porto won the league back off Benfica. So them two just battle it out every year, don't they? Um, Sporting came third. We're still fourth. But we finished fourth. Only three points behind them two. But that's touching distance to them two is pretty good. And we're 75 points. Now, 75 points. We would have been second last year. Two points above Porto. Um, which is decent. Do you know what I mean? We've improved, but I suppose everyone else has improved. Porto got 73 last year and Benfica had 92 last year. Last time we looked, it was January and you knew we had to play Porto and Benfica back to back. Well, we got battered off Porto and we got battered off Benfica. We'd already drawn against Sporting Lisbon earlier in the season, so let's go forward to show you what happened. We ended up playing Porto quite soon. What a game, eh? That winger from last year, and a winger from last year, I was out on loan, bossed it for us, so I can't really complain about that. Uh, Sporting, we beat them 2-1, which is always enjoyable. But this, this, is the piece de resistance. I don't know if I've said that right. The cherry on the cake, eh? The tomato sauce on your sausage butty. So, Taka de Portugal, how did we do in this bad boy? Well, the famous, the very famous, huge mega club, Tondela, 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 1-1. Um, Went to penalties, they got fucking, it was, yeah, crazy. Next up was CS Maritimo in the semi-final, two-legged semi-final, which we won, 2-1. And then again, luck was shining on us, um, we got beat 2-1. But we won, won the penalties. Ass fell out. And then I realised we'd made it to a cup final. And then we lost a cup final. At least we got to one. Really proud of that. I didn't think we had much. Porto have been brilliant this year. Haven't they? They've done the double, haven't they? So, the domestic double. Fair play to them. 
If you're wondering about the other one, the Taka de Liga, the crappy little one, um, SB Braga won that 5 1 against a team I can't pronounce. But oh, we were going to go on a European journey here, boys. Strap yourself in. Getting ready, eh? Have we won it? Have we won it? Let's find out. Uh, we played Rapid Vienna, beating them 1 0. Did just enough. And then at home, we did just enough again with Mueller Winger. Left Winger first game, right Winger next game. Should have scored more. Then we draw Roma and we beat Roma 2 0. And then away from home, we drew 1 1. But we've done enough beating them 3 1. Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, won, uh, scored our goal. And then obviously, going into the next stage against the Europa League's most successful team in the past decade, I'd say. So I was a bit nervous. And I had right to be nervous because we got beat. Pedro Enrique got our goal. They scored two. They probably sort of scored more. They were way better than us. Way, way better. But that Enrique goal, we were going to hang on to that goal like it was like we we're going to die if we let go because we beat him 1 0 at home. Ronaldo, man of the match, by the way. And he scored again. Cristiano Ronaldo. Honest, it's Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, so, yeah, Seville and Roma. <laughs> hey, got to win this. Into the semis against Mainz. And we just, we're just too good. They were better than us, I think, to be fair. But uh, Pedro Enrique slammed that ball in the back of the net with an absolute venom. Um, so, yeah, 2 1. We just have to go to Germany and do a job. And we're in the final. Or, or, we could go to Germany and be shit. And throw it all away and get battered and beaten 5-4 in aggregate, which was fucking heartbreaking. Like a kick in the balls. It's like someone stuck a finger up my bum without asking me. I always like to be asked. So not a bad season. <laughs> a definite improvement. Same position in the league, fourth, but got more points. Um... Europa League semi-final, this this close to going to a final in Europe. Tackle de Portugal, we got to the final and lost. And forget the La Liga one. So, yeah. I mean, top goal scorer in the league, by the way, is Jekka. Jekka. A quick last look at the squad. Arranged by Vidre and they've been fantastic. They really, really have. Me two wingers, Jekka and Ari Bidzi. Brilliant. Enrique's been brilliant. Got some really good players in the middle, some good defenders as well. Um, but like I said, I want to make a couple of changes. Some players aren't happy. Now, I picked this lad up. I didn't show you this guy either. On a free, he got released. And I thought he was. He looked, on paper, he looked brilliant. A little Iraqi from like, somewhere in Portugal. Do you know when you get that list comes up and says, oh, Portuguese teams have released players? I, I saw him and I thought, he'll be good. Just couldn't get in the team. So I'm probably going to try and get rid of him. But I've got Ricardo Costa, who's 39. <laughs> He's retiring. I've got another player retiring. And I finally had one bastard financial benefit affiliate in Japan with FC Tokyo. So I was going to try and get more. I want two. Get one in America. I'll be well happy, but I don't care. As long as I get two. And by the end of year two, not only had I got more spots for my team, the team is now the best. I've got the best coaching team. I've got the best scouting team, which I've never had on the rebuild because I've never really had to scout this much, but I am scouting more than ever. And I've got the best physio team. Well, there you go. That is the end of episode two. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Don't smash the like button. Of course you did. Um, I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed the next year as well. But did it end on a high? Well, you've got to find out, aren't you? Now, normally I try and do these three episodes over three days. Work is just too much at the minute. I've got a lot to do. So it's probably going to be a day off on Thursday, the day after this is released. And then it'll come out the Friday, the Friday after this is released. If you're watching after Friday, happy days. Episode three should be there. But it definitely will be out on Friday. And also, if you want to help the channel a little bit more, you can post on my Patreon. You'll find a link to that down below. But yeah, honestly, I hope you have a great day. You are amazing for taking the time out of your day to watch me play this freaking game. You really, really are. And honestly, you have no idea how much I appreciate that. Um, so you're amazing. Love you. I do. I've been booed. I'll see you next time.